Hi, this is Donna and welcome to DD Paper Crafts. In today's video, we're going to be making this tea caddy style box uh, with a plinth base and a lid. And today I've chosen to use my super smooth back card from Linda Chapman's World of Paper. This is my designer paper and this is from a Stamps by Me black and white collection. So let's put the project together. For our box base we need two pieces which measure six and three quarters by six inches. Along the six and three quarter inch side we're going to score at four inches. Along the six inch side, we're going to score at two and three quarters and five and a half. And we're going to do this on two pieces of cardstock. We're going to fold and burnish the score lines. So this is going to form part of the sides of the box and this will form part of the bottom of the box. On each piece, we're going to cut away the bottom rectangle on the half inch tab. And we're going to cut a wedge into the top rectangle of the half inch tab. And we're going to do that on both pieces. We're now going to add glue to this tab and join the two pieces together. I'm going to pay particular attention to lining up the bottom score lines because you can always trim the top edge if you need to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up the score lines of each of the bottom tabs. To the horizontal score line. And from three of the four tabs, I'm going to cut away a wedge. So I'm going to have this as my bottom piece, and I'm going to cut away a wedge from each of the three other tabs. I'm now going to join up my box again making sure that my score lines at the bottom are in line and I'm now going to fold back the flaps. I'm going to firstly pull over the one which is opposite my complete square, apply glue, and then work around folding each flap one by one. Just lay down the last one and square up the box at the same time. And if there are any slight overhangs, I can cut those once it's dry. I'm going to flip the box over and just go in with my score tool. So now we'll go on to make the lid. For the lid, again, I'm using a full width of A4 by three and a half inches. Along the three and a half inch side, I'm going to score a two 
and three. I'm going to place my card back in and in order to make sure that the lid is big enough to slot over the base of the box I've got a piece of cardstock scrap the same as I'm using here and I'm going to put this up against the edge of the scoreboard in between the edge of the scoreboard and the piece of card and that's just going to shift the card along slightly to help make sure that the lid is big enough to fit on the box so I've got a slight gap here as you can see and I'm now going to score at two and seven eighths I'm now going to push the card back in up against the edge. I'm going to score at five and five eighths, eight and three eighths, and eleven and a quarter. I'm now going to use my ruler and I'm going to make a pencil mark along the top edge halfway in each of these tabs. So my first mark I will do at one and three eighths. Again, one and three eighths here. Lining up my ruler with the edge of the and making a pencil mark of one and three eighths. I'm now going to use my metal ruler and a stylus and I'm going to score by placing my stylus on my pencil mark and my ruler up against it and I'm going to score up to the first score line like so. I'm going to go all the way along repeating the scoring and it's going to create a triangle in each of the four panels. I'm going to fold and burnish each of the horizontal and vertical score lines. And I'm going to start to just fold over with my fingers the diagonal four lines and these will all be mountain folds and you will see that the inside piece naturally becomes a valley fold like so. So our lid will come together like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up the two score lines on the small tab. I'm going to cut away this top tab. like so and I'm going to cut wedges I can also actually cut away this bottom square I'm now going to add glue 
to this bottom half inch tab and I'm going to fold this up into the lid and this is going to give us a reinforced bottom of the lid. I'm now going to cut down each of these top score lines and I'm going to cut away a lot of the triangle so we lose the bulk when we join these together. I'm now going to add glue to my end tab. And I'm now going to go round adding glue to my tabs. And joining up my lid. There we are, so I'm going to tidy that up with my glue rubber. Just going to flatten the score line. So I've now finished the lid. You can see that that fits very nicely onto the top, like so. And to add some interest to the box I thought that I would create a plinth to go around the bottom to create some legs so I'm going to create that now and put it to one side because I'm not sure whether I'm going to stick it on before or after I add the decorative paper so to create the plinth I've got a strip of paper which is one inch wide it's the length of an A4 sheet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my piece of cardstock. I'm going to slot that in, butt my card up against it, and I'm just going to score it two and seven eighths, move the card back, five and three eighths, eight and three eighths and eleven and a quarter. To create the shape for the legs I'm going to use an oval die which I'm going to place in the bottom along the four panels just to add some shape for the feet. So I've run the plinth through my die machine and that's given me the base and I will adhere that around so that will just make a nice stand for the box. Then my decorative paper needs to be two and a half inches by three and three quarter inches so that will sit like so. So I just want to have a think about whether I want to have the plinth over or under. And I think I actually prefer the plinth sitting over the top of the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and add the pattern paper 
and again I'm going to use the construction glue and that will add some strength to the sides of the box. I'm just trying to make sure that the top edge of the pattern paper is aligned around the rim because this bottom bit is going to be covered so it's not so important. There we are. And now I'm going to add my plinth around the base of the box. And before I start gluing the base on, I'm just going to cut away the excess on this tab. That's my last side, my tab underneath. And if I need to, I can trim away any excess. Just get rid of the surplus glue. And there you have the base of the box. So I'm going to set that aside to dry completely. So for the lid, we'll use one strip of designer paper, which 11 and a half inches by three quarters of an inch. And that will allow us a half inch tab underneath. So I have my strip and I'm just going to wrap that around the lid like so. I'm just going to use my bone folder just to go in and just press from the back. the triangles for the lid of the box I cut a square of my designer paper which is which was two and a half inches by one and three quarter inches I then measured along the two and a half inch and made a pencil mark at one and one eighth of an inch and then I cut down to the bottom corner to create the triangles to decorate the lid. Now the designer paper is has been stuck onto the top of the box and the box will come together like so. And in one of those should I, shouldn't I moments that we sometimes have, I wanted to sort of antique it, grunge it up slightly and I wasn't quite sure how to go about that. But I used some Cosmic Shimmer Metallic Gilding Polish. I have this in a silver and a gold. Um, and I use the silver and just with the sponge that comes in the lid, I just went round and brushed along the edges. Um, so this is the finished box. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. I think it's got quite an elegant look about it and I'm really happy with the look of it. I hope you've enjoyed the project. If you have please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos in the future and don't forget to hit the notification bell. So until next time, thanks for watching.